okay guys welcome back to the third part of this tutorial the next thing I'll, I'll do now is I will now use the remainder to check if there's any value or if the number is less than 5 so if the stock in here if it's less than 5 I expect the system to output a message like order more product so that's what I'm going to do now so to achieve that let's go straight into our code right underneath here I will use an if statement if let's say C total is less than 5 let's enter curly braces there okay C it's meant to be C total 1 yeah there we go this very one okay we now want J L B L action dot set text open your parentheses and we enter order more product enter a semicolon and that is it now the next thing I would like the system to achieve for me is once if it's less than five this is what i want the system to do i will run that you guys will see it compile run now let's select any product here and if we enter the value here of how many we want supposing we want 147 that means it's going to be less than five look at that it's saying order more product because we only have three here supposing we have more than five the system would not say order more products so let's try that again okay let's say we have 67 take away 67 from 100 so you should end up with 33 so if you click on total look at that nothing happens okay so that's what i intend to achieve so the next thing is we're going to use else else one the action to output no order required there that is it so let's try this out now run select product enter any amount in there there no action or no order required okay guys I suppose you now get the idea but the other thing I would like you guys to to notice is other dates valid from date expired I would like all of those to be inside where the action is so to achieve that this is what I'm going to do right underneath here I'm going to declare the following variable let's use the following method calendar timer timer will be my own object that I'm creating so I'm creating another object now so calendar dot get dot get instance there take that off and enter semicolon there now the next thing I like this I like to do is the timer that is there to get time enter a semicolon so I will now speed this up so that you guys see what is meant to happen here That's it okay guys this is what will happen if it's less than five okay the following date will be displayed on date of order date of reorder if it's valid or not and the expires date so let's run it let's compile it first and run it And supposing the stock we have in the house is 100 supposing we decide to uh, a customer is putting an order of 98 so all we just need to do is click on that and there you can see okay more uh, order more product and this is the date that I was telling you about so the next thing is I'm going to copy that supposing we have more than five okay 
now I will have to change this I want to change this to item valid there okay so we have an error here let's have a look what we've done wrong okay we need speech map right here there and that is that taken care of so if I run this compile and run it again let's try it out we have 100 let's try another product okay in this product let's go for 300 234 and click on total there no other required and right here item valid okay so what we will do now is we now need to work out the total so to work out the total since we've taken care of all of this we will have to work out the total right up here somewhere let's come right up up here so here let me put a break as a comment I just draw a line there and copy that that is where the total is going to be Paste that in there so the total will be in between those two lines so let's put a comment here and just say add up total there and come right in here and this is where my total is going to be so I will first of all start by let's create an object object select or selected item equals J C M B discount dot get dot get selected item so I've already created an object let's enter our semicolon there I've already created an object right here that should be uppercase there okay so this very object now I'll be using that object to check what is the discount that is selected here right in here okay so whatever we have inside the component JCMB discount is then assigned into selected item this very one okay, that's the name of my object that I've just created now what I will do is I will create a uh, let's create two variable let's call it double I tax comma and I discount so those are my two variables that I intend to use for this calculation so object selected item will be assigned to I discount so we say I discount equals double dot pause double selected selected item dot to string right there and enter your parentheses there also parentheses and semicolon okay I think we don't need we don't need two of those let's delete one there okay now we now need to call product number two and product number three I'm talking about the array that we declared earlier on okay inside product two and product number three I will call the following the following content will be stored inside product two and product three and those content are meant to be the content or the value inside the text box and the value inside the cost LBL cost that should be uppercase C yeah there okay so let me show you the cost that is where the cost is and the other one LBL whatever you enter in here 
is stored in here so once that is done the next thing we want to do now is I discount I discount right there would now be let's go for product number two this very one paste that in there multiply that by product number three array product number three then multiply that by I discount undo that I discount that is right up here entire bracket divide that by 100 to give us the discount value and here we need a semicolon there okay so the discount if you select zero you won't get any discount if you select five the discounts will be a uh, discount of five from the product board or purchase installed inside i discount now the next thing we want to do is product this is another array for equals we will add all of these together multiply them together and deduct I discount enter a semicolon once that is done let's close that once that is done the next thing we want to do is convert this to string so let's create let's call that sub subtotal cost equals string dot value let's say value of product 4 enter an array there and right here enter the semicolon okay now the next thing is once that is sorted because it's already converted into a string and we now want it inside our we want that the result right inside the subtotal get the name of the subtotal we have to convert it to a string because the system will only javanet being only accept string inside objects such as text and label so this very label will become dot sets text open a bracket and whatever we have in here we will now store it right in here and enter a semicolon and there that is all that's that's all there is to it so the subtotal is taken care of right now so if I run it you guys will only see the subtotal we will not see tax or total okay what I would do now is let's try this out let's run it compile and run the final output let's see how it's going to look like so select any product here enter how many order that we want let's click on total yeah you see that we have the subtotal okay is the same method that we will use for tax and total to achieve the tax and total all we just need to do is just to save time I'm now going to speed that up okay guys this is how it looks now you can see this is where we ended up with the subtotal and now here that is for the tax and finally that's for total okay just these six lines that is it so what I will do is run the system for you guys to see select any product in there 
and let's say we want 112 loaves of bread let's click on total or let's select discount there let's go for five percent discount and that's what we get you can see the figures out there which means this num values need to be formatted let's say we go for 10 percent discount you guys see that and supposing we go for 15 percent discount you see how the discount works 20 percent 25 percent there so the next thing we need to do is to format all of this output into pound sign so to do that that's quite easy really so we come in here and we enter as follows those are the format that I've already completed okay have a good look at it All right so if I run it now compile and run the program select whatever product let's say we intend to go for 62 62 bags of carrot and let's say we have about 15 percent discount select the customer details order id customer id then vat no vat account type let's go for debit account and visa card uh, let's oh that's mastercard okay let's go for visa card z on sales not on sales and that's all of the information we required if i then click on total there all that is left for us to do now is to enter our customer details add a big daddy okay address let's say number 17 london london road let's say kingsland okay that's the address of our customer and that's all of the information that is required so the guys with that i'm going to call it the end of this tutorial i suppose you all enjoy it but before i go let me show you the final output or let me show you the codes for the total just before i leave okay right here those are the lines of code for the total have a good look at it take it down there and that's all there is to it okay that's the total and let's come here so that you guys see the code for reset those are the lines of code for reset and exit is only one single line of code right there so with that guys i'll call it the end of this tutorial i suppose you all enjoy it and please do subscribe bye for now